Hello and welcome to Artists Soar. This is a podcast for artists by three artists. We discuss all aspects of being artists, the good, the bad, and the ugly. The goal of each podcast is to provide solutions so artists can focus on their creativity and soar above. I'm Rachel Harshenko. Jules McCullough. Stephanie Weaver. This is episode about exhibitions and putting our art on display. Pablo Picasso once said, painting is just another way of keeping a diary. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about exhibitions and putting our art on display. And actually, one of us has a show coming up. Yay. (laughs) <laughs> and that would you be sound Stephanie. So thrilled, Stephanie. She's a little bit timid. She's looking at her spreadsheet going, where am I in this? Well, yeah. I know you have a spreadsheet, girl. <laughs> no, if I did, I wouldn't feel so bad right now. <laughs> okay. First off, when is your show? Um, well, we put up November 20th and take down, I think it's February 3rd. Um, it was something that we planned that we, me and the mouse in my pocket planned, um, I think it was last year and that I got accepted to do the exhibition at Low Mill and like a lot of these expedition, expedition, exhibitions, uh, they plan like well into a year in advance. So it's kind of tricky, I think. So it's going to be at Low Mill over the winter. So it's like eight weeks, two, six weeks. Yeah, no. I think six weeks, eight, maybe six. I don't know. Well, it starts November 20th and it ends February 3rd. So it's like eight weeks, eight weeks, a long time. And you're going to be downstairs in one of the larger um, displays. Yeah. So you're going to have two massive walls. Yeah. A third wall and then part of a fourth wall. Right. Well, that's exciting. Do you know what you're going to be displaying? I did two years ago when I, or a year ago. When I, well, what were you thinking <laughs> about? What were you um, thinking about at the time? So I submitted this thing where it was um, you, the experience through the pandemic you know, uh, in my artwork. And there was about 32 pieces that were going to go into the show. I had, now have some of them and then um, some of them sold. So, but since then, I've also created more that's more in the style that came as an evolution of the uh, pandemic. So I think, um, you know, they haven't, they being Lil Mill, hasn't necessarily requested that I adhere to it, the original thought. So I think I'm going to be okay expanding it a little bit. so that's where my uh, trepidation kind of comes from is because I'm not 100%. What am I going to do? What am I going to show? And mm-hmm. because I'm, I'm going through the original um, proposal that I sent them. Right. And yeah, there, there's quite a few pieces that I still have. But like the whole grief series is gone um except for the big one and uh many of the flowers are gone Mm, mm -hmm. so but a lot of this i do have so it's just gonna have to be a little bit i'm gonna have to rethink it and i've only got basically a week to rethink it (laughs) before we have to put up (laughs) well for the benefit of our listeners why don't you talk about a little bit about the evolution that you're trying to present the story you're telling and um and then for those who are local or visiting they can come see the actual imagery of it as well okay so it was 2019 i started experimenting a lot with um different types of materials and trying to get a three-dimensional effect on my artwork and to create an illusion of movement in a different way, other than just going with a somata and a method where it's got um, diminishing edges and you know creating that illusion of movement that way. Um, I wanted a different way. So I started playing with uh, three dimension, building 
oil layers upon acrylic, um, like glass type stuff, and uh, working through that. So that was about 2019. And then when the pandemic hit, um, like I painted like 30 something pieces in the first month because it was just such a time where you could just be by yourself, which was for us introverts is like amazing. And yep. <laughs> mm-hmm. so I painted like crazy, but it was all very simple, like uh, just flowers, just a single flower, white background. And then I started combining animals and flowers. And so things started building. And then the more time that I had alone, I started building more stories of art, more stories using my art with animals and having the animals almost act like humans. And then, um, and those stories really played a lot with what we were experiencing in the pandemic as a um, society, I guess where the funny thing is, is as I was painting the stuff and kind of putting things together, I didn't really recognize what I was doing until I started journaling about it. And like one of the, one of the pieces is called, um, uh, let me make sure I pull it up here. Oh, I feel like I'm going 90 miles a minute today. <laughs> but uh, It's called, are you protected or trapped? And it's a 30 by 30 oh. and it's of our cat cookie looking in on a uh, mouse hole and the mouse is sitting there with his little hands over his mouth and going, Oh, you know, kind of scared. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you kind of go back to the pandemic where we were really trapped or were we safe? Were we protected or were we, you know, so that was one that I was like, Holy crap, look what I'm doing. And then the next one that kind of came in that series was um, who's ruling, who, who is ruling who? And I had cookie <laughs> or a cat cookie. Um, we played with her a little bit and my daughter down like on her knee and held her up to where I could then take a picture of her looking down so I could bring her in my mind and then put it in a painting like she's dangling from a chandelier and that chandelier is in our dining room and there's chaos all around with uh, Brownie who's another animal (laughs) another one of our animals looking all passed out from a uh, picture that I took from her, like probably two years before. She's a black cat with little bat teeth. And so when she's like all sprawled out with her belly up wide open and her teeth all hanging out, <laughs> <she's>, <laughs> so I, I got those two. So Cookie's hanging from the chandelier. The cat uh, Brownie is passed out. <clears throat> and then you got Bacon, our dog who's on the floor looking up like what in the world is happening because I was climbing on the furniture taking pictures of him <laughs> laying on the floor and then uh, Sophie what uh she was when I was taking a picture of the chandelier I was standing on the dining room table and Sophie's over to the left just staring up at me a tail wagging like crazy and so she's in it all our animals are in it and then I put mice everywhere and that's why it's like, who's ruling who? The mice had won and um, everybody else is just like, the dogs are, this is a chaos. One of them looks extremely happy about it. The cats are like, oh, what in the world is going on? How do I get down from here? So <laughs> like, who's ruling who? It's a who? funny painting. It's really, it's a, it is awesome. It's got so much personality. Yeah, it's, it's pretty neat. And then the final of that series I actually did this year where Cookie, our cat, um, all I knew was I wanted an animal in a bird cage. And so I started flipping through my phone because, you know, we take like thousands of pictures and <laughs> never delete a single one. And Emily happened to take a picture of Cookie cleaning herself. So she <laughs> totally busted and pissed off look. And with her belly, her fat belly all exposed. And she's just looking at you like she's been kind of busted and angry about it. She's looking at you like, what? (laughs) Yes. I was like, oh, this is perfect. I'm going to put her in the birdcage. And then I'm going to put the mice all around. Like they finally won. And that one's called, um, I think that one's called Little People One. Um, So in this, it's actually very kind of funny and lighthearted imagery. But the political stuff kind of behind it and what's going on in my mind was like, when are the little people going to uprise? 
and, you know, capture those fat cats and tell them to get out of our lives. <laughs> right. <laughs> Stop ruling us. We don't need to be ruled. And um, so that's kind of, that was one of the series. And so all of this started kind of coming together when I actually started journaling about the, the artwork. Cause and Julie and I talked about it. Um, I like, I wanted an exhibition. I didn't, I'm like, you gotta have a cohesive story. And she's like, you need to really kind of look at what you have. And it does make sense. So it was a matter of sitting down and actually looking at what I'm doing, writing about what I was doing. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting, though, that you had your work and then you journaled about it like you did your work and then you thought about it later and you were like, OK, yeah. what is this saying to me? And yeah. I, I love that because some people work the opposite. Yeah. I'm not, that you know, strong. some people want to go, I want to make a piece about uh, turmoil or whatever. Right. Yeah. And like, this is how I'm feeling right now. But you were like, I'm just painting, 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 painting. And it's almost like your brain had to catch up with what your body was doing. So I, that's right. kind of interesting. I think there's a lot of, for me, there's a lot of subconscious work in my artwork. And mm -hmm. I admire those who can actually take a concept, like they enter in those competitions all the time. Like we're going to do a competition where the, uh, or a show where the um, subject is blah. I don't know. Like you were saying, turmoil in the women's society and blah, blah, blah. And, right. <laughs> and they are able to create something from that. I look at that stuff and go, I got nothing. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, um, well, you like to, you like your work to, I can only think of a few pieces that don't fit this, what I'm about to say, but your work generally to me brings happiness and joy. Right. Like you are like, because I mean, you do a lot of pets too. I mean, yeah. you don't, right. that's not all you do, but um, it's, it's, it definitely has that storytelling about it. And like your middle finger, that's the only one I'm, I'm like, but even then to me, it's playful. There's because, a story there. <laughs> I mean, there's a story, be playful, yeah. but it was so funny. I mean, it wasn't funny how it came about, but that yeah. one definitely came out of something that you were um, experiencing. So yeah. 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 It's that's interesting. Funny. So what yeah. all, how many pieces do you have to have? I don't even know. Um, we were, my, the original uh, thought was 32 pieces. And I definitely still have like that. Because since, since that time, I've come up with the Hummingbird series, which is also a little bit of a political statement. Um, but through really pretty imagery of animals um, interacting with a hummingbird. And the hummingbird is... The bringer of good news and and her good news her name harmony is her good news is so captivating it even captivates the most nefarious foes including like a big a bear um which i didn't recognize when i was putting that together that the bear was more represented russia and the bald eagle was sitting on top of the bear uh representing the united states and they're stopped listening and they're stopped doing their thing listening to a hummingbird who's trying to bring good news and it was um so that series is new that i'd like to see in the show yeah sure. i would like to see that too i think that's a good yeah. series that you have definitely yeah. the hummingbird series is a great one have you thought about doing like just individual pieces like on the smaller walls just to kind of say here's who I am. I'm not necessarily a series, but I'm yeah. a little bit of everything. Well, that's what the, the evolution kind of happened was like with all the little things, like all the 10 flowers. And then there was um, uh, the long neck series, which is a four, no, yeah, four animals, total of eight paintings because the bottom part is part of the neck and the top part is part of the head. <laughs> right. So, um, mm -hmm. so yeah, there was a bunch of little ones. But not necessarily like the six by sixes. I think the smallest is an eight by 10 and the largest is a, I think a, 
Oh, yeah, that one's big. Because don't you have some thirty smaller ones like your mice or aren't they yeah. like six by sixes? I didn't plan on doing that. Well, I was going to say when you're doing an ex exhibition and maybe this is just something I made up in my own head. But to me, it holistically needs to tell a story. Right. Mm -hmm. So you can't just put random pieces in that aren't part of that story. Right. Gotcha. Like to me, the long necks don't necessarily fit what's going on with everything else. With the harmony oh. story. Right. Yeah. And that's part of the problem because like when I first put it together, it was the story about the evolution of my art through the pandemic. Yeah. And I don't know. That's the that's what I hate about exhibitions that you've got to plan like a year to two years. I've changed and th things have sold. Like let's right. evolve here. <laughs> let's be yeah. let's be I, I mean, structured. I was gonna say would at this point, would you be willing to sort of recreate something? Not recreate it, but reimagine it and paint it to just fit that series or would you just go here's this series here's this series and be done with it see to me i don't think that you i think you have plenty of stuff even if you sold some of it to still tell that story because he said so the hummingbird too. series is, to me is still along that same storyline yeah i like the hummingbird i think you should yeah. definitely put harmony in there yeah i think I, I probably have enough the only ones that are not part of the original are probably some of the unicorn series and the the uh what is that the the grief series i have three of the five of those and i was gonna I, say did you get those back from that you had that show probably i don't know if i want to though <laughs> if that <works. laughs> um and then i've uh some of the flowers but I've it's not like you have to have 10 pieces of flowers, you know? Right, right. exactly. Oh. But I, I mean, the grief series, I think, is important because that was part of the pandemic and yeah. you evolving as an artist. I, I really think that series was a, a light switch moment for you. Yeah. That had people in it, too. That's the other right. thing significantly different about that one. Yeah, exactly. I think that's a highlight. Mm -hmm. definitely so, let's see I, I guess I would have to figure out um, <laughs> oh my it's so funny because like you said this is like a year or two years ago and you really are in a different headspace so yeah. what do you what do you think you're gonna do like how are you gonna approach this I think I'm gonna not address the grief series and just kind of leave that one out because and I've got new pieces that will from the hummingbird series and then the final piece that I didn't have, but it finished, but I had it in my mind sort of. Um, so those will take the place. Yeah. Oh, okay. I think I've got the, I've got the full load. It'll be good. And then how many pieces will you have in it then? Over 30. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. That's going to be so good. And so again, what are the dates? <laughs> ah, no, I, I did pull it up November 22nd through February 3rd. And so this week. At Low Mill. At Low Mill on the first floor. And what's floor, the address? 2211 Seminole Drive. And in then Huntsville. You, in Huntsville, Alabama. Yeah. And if you do come, come visit me in my studio in Studio 270. Um, and I guess if I'll, I'll find out more because I know I'm supposed to do some sort of presentation or like. Mm -hmm. or something they have like artists that artists open house yeah i think that's gonna be on the february 3rd and they sent me some spreadsheets i'm supposed to fill out so there we go and <laughs> <laughs> so they can make the labels and they'll actually have like a catalog and a, a show postcard um awesome. yeah and i gotta come up with the artist statement that's the other interesting thing. So when I submitted all this stuff, I submitted like a whole proposal with my earth statement, my bio, mm -hmm. um, every piece as I wanted it on the wall and with all the labels and everything. So thank God I did all that. 
Um, cause it's going to go. Oh, so well, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, normally, I mean, I'm trying to think of how low mills sets it up and they have like one little wall with the artist statement that you find. And then the pieces are labeled. All labeled yeah. Yeah. So they'll, they'll take care of all that. I just need to get them the spreadsheet and that'd be great. It'll be grand a little bit. Um, this is the first one. And I think that I've done where I haven't controlled everything. That's really exciting. We'll have to like at least do a quick video of it and put it yep. up on the Facebook page or something. Definitely. So everyone can see and maybe do it like after February. So it'll encourage everyone to come see it. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and then if they missed it, they can see the video. Well, I'm wondering, like, one of the things I was thinking and even considering is um, I was looking at other exhibition spaces and like they've got some in North or South Carolina. I don't remember which one, but I was looking at, I think it was Art Artist Art Fields, F-I-E-L-D-S. I was mm -hmm. looking at that and the thought of shipping this stuff. Ugh, that would just. I wouldn't do it. If I, if I would drive it. Yeah. It would have to be drivable for me so that I could take my pieces and leave them. Yeah. I just wondered about the, there was another exhibition I was looking at in um uh overseas and to think about having to ship all that stuff. That, well, you yeah, know, not worry about that because our friend Jennifer, you know, she's lost several pieces because the gallery never sent them back. Yeah. 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 Right, I forgot about that. And I think that was maybe she just didn't pick the right gallery. I don't know. Like you would think they would be upstanding and Yeah, but I've heard that story more than once. Yes. I've um, heard it multiple times. Yeah. Um, and that that's what makes me more nervous about an ex exhibition because it's not always run by a gallery necessarily. Sometimes, you know, it may be, you know, a hotel or who has art exhibits or, mm -hmm. you know, like our airport has an art exhibit. I was thinking the same thing. And, you know, it's not always a gallery that's doing it. Yeah. It could be a coffee house or. A, right. We were mm -hmm. at a coffee house in Asheville and they have like little local artist things on the wall. And I was like, oh, that's cute. I don't know if yeah. I would do that, but I don't know. Uh, I worried there was one that I did. It was just here locally again with uh, the library. And that one, I was particularly worried about uh, one piece because, again, it was a political statement and it was not <coughs> a bless you. <coughs> bless you. It was. <laughs> it was Did uh, I mute myself? I no. No. Dang it. <laughs> it's okay. I'm yeah. so sorry. I was trying to mute myself. <laughs> they were delicate sneezes. You were fine. <laughs> so it's the local like library me. does that. That's nice, though. Yeah. So I was, uh, but I was worried about one of them because it wasn't, it like these animal ones, they're kind of overt. Now she's, man, she's sneezing like crazy. She made it mute herself that time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm getting my nose. Um. But these uh these animal ones they're not overly overt on the uh well they're not overly in, you know, you can't tell them doing a political statement unless you actually read it and uh, right look at it but um the one that I had at the library I was particularly worried about because it was um it was a cotton field with this really pretty red old barn that we have here in Huntsville and I put a uh, rebel flag on the roof and um. Because it was just, it was at a time when we were, uh, the United States was going through, and it still might be going through it, I don't know, um, concerns about uh, racism. And, well, duh, that was a stupid statement. Of course, we're still going through that. But right. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, um, it was right after, like, some guy went into a church, um, some crazy redneck guy. And then we live in the South, so I can say that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And he like lit up some church and oh yeah that was over in like south carolina or something yeah a few years back and everybody started going on up over like blaming um a, a symbol of the uh, american uh, the rebel flag 
And I was just like, man, that's not the problem. It's kind of <laughs> what that statement was about. Well, and there was just, there was something in the news this week about, you know, those protesters in France, they keep protesting and they throwing stuff on paintings. And like this oh, week what? they took hammers to this piece. It's like $90 million or something oh stupid, incredible. And, oh. and then they sat down and, and it was all over climate change. And like, what does this painting have to do with climate change? <laughs> you know? Exactly. Like, leave the art alone. Like, don't mess with. It makes me so mad well, when I they think do a stuff lot like of that. that. It's stuff like has gotten to the point where it's just a narcissistic behavior instead of addressing the issue in a, a mature adult manner and <laughs> and right. having a discussion and trying to work with the the congressman or whoever's in charge. They just go. Well, it just it upset me because it's like at the Louvre or somewhere, and I'm like, if you have a ninety million dollar painting, would you mm. not have security guards? I mean, it's like the Mona Lisa. The Mona Lisa has security guards. I mean, like, mm. oh, all over the Louvre, there are security guys, and er- I mean, it's it's crazy secure. At least and when I was there, even in Huntsville here, like, like even Huntsville's art museum, you get too close, and they're like. What do you like about the painting? Like they'll it engage you, you know, like like and don't touch, you know. And yeah. I like that. I'm like, okay, good, you know, because yeah. Whatever. Yeah. When I went to the, I think it was the MoMA, MoMA, and they had the um like a Van Gogh, I don't know, someplace in New York, and they had a Van Gogh, and I was like getting really kind of close because I wanted to see how thick the paint was. The paint is really guy, thick. Like, yeah, He's right up, and it's like you need to back off. And I was, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> I did that in Houston. We were at the art museum there, and I, I was like, I was like, wait, let me look. And I was getting too close, and the guard was coming over, and John's like, back away, back away, back away. <laughs> You're too close, and I'm like, wait, I just want to look. It's so cute, right? <laughs> no, put a body part over the the line. <laughs> yeah, I wonder how many people have gotten kicked out before like getting too close. <laughs> Well, apparently in France, they don't really care. I don't. Yeah, I don't take a hammer. That. Like it was sledgehammers. They're walking in with a hammer. Like, well, I guess maybe the security guard was like, well, they we got a hammer. And um, the cans of paint, like the red hour. paint. <laughs> that red paint that they did. I'm like, what? How did they hide that? Well, in backpacks and stuff and bags. Yeah. Like a backpack, they'll they'll make you carry it on the front. But I mean, you can put all that in a bag. It's not a big deal. But I don't know. I don't. There's so much so much security. It's crazy. So much security, especially at the Louvre and uh, Musée Musée du Orsay, which I probably didn't pronounce correctly. But um, there's just it's crazy how much security there is. So it's amazing that they can get away with it. I just had like a crazy thought. You know how like no bad publicity is good publicity. Yeah. You can there probably, you, go. you can probably my art. <laughs> I know. I could like arrange somebody to go throw crap on my art. <laughs> yeah. And then well, like, I'm wondering you should do your middle finger and like have someone like you could pay me and then it'll be big news. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, but I'm also wondering that. like how much of it is really real news there's i mean yeah every time we hear something about now and i'm like really i i find it hard to i I don't know i just after having been there in the last within the last five years i just find it hard to believe that that could happen but i'm sure it does i read an article about what the the person that threw red paint on one of the some Mm -hmm. big painting or something it was actually glass over the painting right right but still it's just like one what in the world does that have to do with climate change two <laughs> leave the art alone yeah right, right. exactly yeah. what's i mean the art's not harming anything it's maybe making a statement or however you want to interpret it but it's yeah. you know interpretable <laughs> interpretable <laughs> <laughs> Well, whatever the word is yeah. well we're excited about your exhibition well, it's gonna be so lovely we'll have to show you a party or something well the funny thing is i listened to katrina berg you know she does like exhibitions all the time yeah oh, yeah she just got done with a really big one this summer 
Yeah. And she really markets the heck out of these things. She does an amazing job. She'll go on TV and do interviews. She'll go on a podcast and do interviews. And I have like, this has really snuck up on me, even though, you know, it's been here, but I am just for my usual self. I am overextending myself and half-assing some things. Thanks for listening to <laughs> Artist Soar. Well, I mean, yeah, this is a podcast help. for artists by artists. Out. And, and if you have you any questions, feel podcast. free to email us at hello at artistsoar.com. Yeah. Be sure to leave us a five-star oh, review on Apple Podcasts so you can get more of us and yeah. we can bring in some sponsors <laughs> to help you <laughs> and help us. <laughs> I know. That would be awesome. Leave notes. Put it under your door if she's not there. Definitely let her know if you come by. Yeah, I wonder if, uh, I don't know, now I'm just spitballing and, and you know, the good idea fairy is all around. Uh, so, <laughs> so we should do a live podcast. <laughs> oh, that would be That's so a great fun. idea. That's a yeah. great idea. Y'all listen. You know what we should do, actually, is each one of us on Instagram do a group Instagram, oh. a live group. Oh, oh, that would be fun. Yeah. Okay. All right. You're oh, going to have to uh-huh. show us how. <laughs> I don't know. I've never done it, but I've watched. Or we could do the, the Facebook live through Artist Soar. And we are terrible about actually using our, our social medias for. We are. We, right, for we do not practice what we preach, do we? <laughs> well, we do for our individual businesses, but our group. We do. Like, artists or no, we're terrible. <laughs> yeah. So you guys help us with this. Okay. We know that y'all are much better than we are. <laughs> All right. Well, be sure and sh- show Stephanie the love with her mm-hmm. art as she is. It's a huge display at Low Mill. It's, yeah, it's very great. exciting and we're thrilled. And hopefully this will help you spread the word. Ah, oh, thank you. That's amazing. Until next time. <laughs> Until next time. <laughs>